What's up everyone, it's Prometheus, and today I want to talk about this study that came out from the University of Oregon about espresso. So it's not every day that espresso makes front page news, and I had people calling me, I even had just a few minutes ago a Patreon member send me the article, I've had people ask for my opinion on this article a few different times over the last few days, so I wanted to put this video together kind of on the fly and talk about my thoughts about this whole experiment and basically what they're proposing. The study is called Systematically Improving Espresso, Insights Through Mathematical Modeling and Experiment. So it's kind of a mouthful. I've read the entire study a couple different times. I've really kind of focused in on a few different points. And let me just show you what this study looks like and kind of what I went through looking at it. So just from looking at it, you'll see that there's lots of complex things going on in there. There's mathematical equations, there's charts, there's graphs, and a lot of that stuff is kind of above my pay grade and understanding. Whenever I do anything that I put the word science in, people freak out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a more low tech direction at looking at this whole thing and kind of look at it from the perspective of someone tasting espresso and kind of give you my two cents on if this is even a legitimate option and what other options are out there and what I actually really think about this whole piece. First, I wanna try these new style shots. They're talking about fundamentally changing the way we make espresso. So what they're saying is they want us to switch from that third wave, high dose, thick and syrupy pull to a lower dose, short and relatively watery pull. And I'm using watery not as a bad term, but it's just kind of a describing term of what it looks like, but this whole thing makes me think about James Hoffman's video where he talks about how ugly modern espresso is. If this is the future of espresso, it's only gonna get uglier, but looks aren't everything. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull two different shots. I'm gonna pull one to this new standard that they're proposing and a standard shot to like the way we normally do it and kind of compare the two and see where they actually fall in terms of flavor and how they really differ. And obviously we can kind of guess how it's gonna differ in some ways, but I wanna actually give you a real, in the moment feedback on what these shots taste like. So starting with the standard shot, it's sweet, it has a nice full body, it's complex, and has a really nice level of acidity, which isn't too bright or really like sour. It's not like under extracted. It's got this really nice level of acidity in there. It's 20 grams in, 40 grams out, and about 26 seconds. So that's as a standard shot you're gonna get in a cafe and you're gonna be happy with it. I'm happy with it, I got no complaints. I'm not writing the manager a letter or doing Yelp reviews, whatever. So let's look at this new style shot. It's got a lot of nice sweetness still there. It's surprisingly smooth. It's not as complex or as heavy on my palate as the traditional shot, which is kind of what I expected. I mean, it's spread out, it's got less grounds, like the same amount of water. So that flavor complexity is really kind of like muddled in the whole experience but it's not unpleasant. In fact, there are some factors that I like about this shot more than I liked about the traditional shot. But as a straight espresso, it's really clean and, and relatively drinkable. Like, it would be easy to drink. There's no crazy intensity to it, which some people really like about espresso, some people don't. So that's kind of a, you know, give or take, depending on your palate and what you like. But the biggest caveat here is, especially here in America, people like to put flavors and milk and all these different things in their espresso, and this shot just won't hold up. It just won't taste like anything. It'll be a slightly beige-colored milk at the end of it, mm, and it's just not gonna work. That's one thing, like, as a shot on its own, it's fine. As a shot in a drink, that's got milk or flavors or anything in there, it's gonna just completely get buried. But on the flip side of that, you've got the consistency. They talk about how it's more of a consistent flow when you grind coarser and have faster shots. Coffee is getting hit with water all at the same time and running a lot more even. So I do notice it's definitely more consistent flow and probably more repeatable in the long run, but is it really better? Uh, it's maybe. Another thing brought up in this study is that using less coffee is going to be better for not only the cafe and roasters experience, but also for the environment. And those are things that I wanna talk about a little more in depth. So first off, for the cafe and roaster, 
if you are gonna be saving a certain amount of money because you're using less coffee per shot, which they did prove in the study, they used a cafe in Portland to actually implement this system and they ended up saving about $32 or $3,500, something like that, which is great, right? That can go into lots of other things, keeping the cafe nice, paying people more, all those factors involved with you know being a good cafe and saving some money. So I think that's good, but the flip side of that is does that also mean you're going to buy less coffee? How is that going to affect, you know, farmers, importers, people who are running businesses that are behind a cafe? Like cafe can't exist without those people. So I don't think there's much thought put into how using less coffee, if, even though it's five grams and, you know, a little bit of coffee, what's that like six or seven coffee beans in total, but still that will add up. Let's say every cafe or third wave cafe in the United States decides to go this direction, then that's a huge amount of coffee that's already either picked and processed and isn't going anywhere and ends up going to waste, or it's coffee that just isn't bought and farmers and importers are just losing tons of money because less coffee is being purchased. So that's a consideration, I think, for this idea. And when they use the example that it's better environmentally, I'm kind of, Eh, on that you know I think that there's a lot of talk about sustainability and environmentally sound ideas in the coffee industry and I think that's great to a certain extent but I think we also like to throw band-aids on things and say oh we're actually doing our part um, let's just say straws are an example if you're not familiar in the US we a lot of places banned using plastic straws which is a great step but not really a step it's like a one sixteenth of a step maybe uh, in the total grand scheme of becoming sustainable with a coffee company or cafe so i just always think of that meme of flex tape of that guy slapping a piece of tape over this massive thing of water that's just dumping and like oh bam it's fixed and that's kind of how i feel about this five gram savings per shot as a way to save money and save environment just doesn't really I don't see the connection that well and I think like it's a it's a good thing people are talking about it but it needs to be talked about in a much broader scale and it needs to be talked about in like way different heavier things than saving five grams a shot if it was just about saving coffee like that's just making it so there's more coffee down the line ideally i guess the whole point is is like oh okay if we save this seven grams of coffee or five grams of coffee then you know we'll be able to spread this coffee out for a longer period of time and more people will be able to have coffee until it goes extinct but we should be looking more at the fact that coffee plants like the most popular coffee plants are slowly going extinct because of climate issues and things like that so i think that should be the thing we're looking at not like oh we'll just use less coffee so we can spread it out over more time does that make sense and one of the things they also talked about was blending a traditional shot and a new style shot and that just doesn't really make sense in my mind so if that's the case then you have to have one grinder set up to dose the 20 gram shot another grinder set up to dose a coarser 15 gram shot and then blend them to your right capacity. And they always talk about in this whole thing that faster shots mean you're gonna save time. And save time means faster ticket times, which in the end doesn't really matter that much. But you're talking about saving time and now we're talking about Brisa's pulling two shots, which is gonna actually equate to a total of four actual shots because it's still pulling doubles. and then they're having to blend them to taste. Even if you have the right ratios and you're able to quickly do that, you're still using two grinders, pulling two separate shots, blending the shots, and then you have two portafilters to clean. And one thing that I did notice too, between the old shot or the traditional shot and the new style shot is that knocking out a puck of a new style doesn't really come out cleanly. It's so coarse and it's so few grinds even in a smaller basket which i was using a 17 gram basket for it sticks and then you have to spend time cleaning it out so there's that time saved gone now last but not least one of these topics that comes up a lot i know i've talked about it a lot and i've gotten mixed signals from people about it is extraction percentage so this comes up a lot 
in this article and they talk about how the coarser ground coffee and faster shots is more consistent with extraction percentage in fact tends to have just as high if not higher extraction percentage than our traditional finely ground espresso at 20 grams or whatever your input is and i decided to leave that bit out of the video for two reasons now the first reason is i don't have a tds meter anymore the one i used was my previous employers so that's not mine anymore i don't have it and I'm saving up for a VST, which is basically the Porsche of TDS meters. And you know, that might take a little bit of time if you wanna help out with that. There's a link to my Patreon right up here right now and join up, help me out, get some better gear like VST meters, cameras, all that stuff. And the second reason is this, and I know this might be news to someone. Extra, extra, read all about it. High extraction percentage doesn't mean better tasting coffee. I'm gonna come out and say it. I'm gonna say it right now, okay? So I don't really wanna talk about that extraction percentage on this video or about this study because I don't really think it really makes a difference at you know face value or even deep down in this study. I think this study has its heart in the right place. It's really trying to just help. It's just not enough. If you wanna save coffee, save more coffee and go back to doing single shots as being the norm where you're using you know, seven to 14 grams of coffee and you're pulling it like you're pulling now where they have thick syrupy shots that have the same flavors and components that we're looking at just a less output, that might be a way to save some coffee. But in the end, saving a few grams here and a few grams there, even though that adds up in the long run, just isn't enough. Like we talked about, there needs to be more done and saving a few grams is just not gonna get us there. So that's my view on this study. Let me know your thoughts below. Have you tried this shot style? What do you think? Do you think that this study is going to gain widespread support? You know, when they kicked the plastic straws at Starbucks, lots of people followed suit. So do you think that this 15 gram new style shot is going to kind of take on its own life and people are gonna start pushing in that direction? Or do you kind of feel the same way I do where it's kind of like too little at this point, like we need to make bigger changes to the overall coffee world that aren't saving, you know, five grams of coffee per espresso shot and also potentially hurting what we already enjoy and having something that we don't enjoy as much. Like, is it worth that? So drop your comments down below. Let me know your thoughts and we'll see you next time. And a big thank you to my January Patreons, Aiden, Bound Coffee Co., Claire, Jonathan, Nathan, Noel, Robert, Spookus, Samantha, Stephen, Thomas B., Thomas S., Tim, Lisa, and Mika, and of course the Barista Tier folks if you want information on my Patreon, that's down in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram at Prometheus, the blog at Prometheus.com, hit that little bell button for notifications, and as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy. <laughs>